Hello there. With the whole world on lockdown due to this coronavirus pandemic, I have taken shelter down in this creepy cellar. If you're having trouble understanding me, I cannot take this mask off. Not because of the coronavirus. Uh, this cellar is the habitat of a different virus, the hantavirus, which is carried by rodents, and people can get it if they're in proximity to their fecal material. The world left in a standstill as industry and travel ground to a halt. Only a few months earlier, rumors of a virus spreading in a city in China were the only hint of the coming pandemic. These early cases centered from the Hunan wet market in Wuhan, China. This market sold fish and meat to the population, and dealt in bush meat, which is a fancy way of saying exotic animals. Here lies the probable place where COVID-2019, or scientifically severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, originated. Genetically, the virus is similar to certain coronaviruses collected from horseshoe bats held at the market for human consumption. It also has many similarities to coronavirus that affect Malayan pangolins, a strange endangered mammal whose meat is considered a delicacy and armored keratin scales are a bogus Chinese cure-all. In this disgusting natural petri dish of caged wild animals awaiting slaughter, one strain of these viruses won the evolutionary jackpot, and a mutation gave it proteins that allowed it to successfully transfer from a rare forest creature to a human, and then an entire planet of humans. Diseases that spread from animals to humans are called zoonotic. From Wuhan it spread like wildfire, and soon was across the globe, taking advantage of our post-World War II globalized society. This coronavirus, though, is not the only such widespread disease that originated in forest creatures. In fact, at least 70% of epidemics and pandemics are associated with wildlife. In the early 2000s, another SARS coronavirus had a smaller outbreak, where again horseshoe bats in Chinese markets were implicated, and the virus itself was isolated from masked palm civets, another small mammal whose flesh is prized in some parts of China. Bats also seem to have been the origin of the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus, MERS, with camels having some antibodies, suggesting they help spread the disease. The dreaded Ebola virus is likely a disease of large fruit bats in African rainforest. Basically, don't mess with bats, or eat them. The ongoing pandemic of acquired immune deficiency syndrome, or AIDS, caused by the two strains of human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, seems to have come from the bushmeat trade in Africa, specifically primate meat. People who hunt and eat African primates sometimes experience an infection of simian immunodeficiency virus, SIV. Some point in the early 20th century, two strains of SIV acquired mutations, becoming more virulent and more suited to take advantage of human hosts, becoming HIV. And as I said in avoiding the coronavirus in my creepy cellar, there could be the rodent spread hantavirus. These human health crises are ultimately caused by our society's destruction of the natural world. As we expand the reach of civilization into the jungle, we come in direct contact with diseases that can easily make the leap to infect us. As we push into what was virgin wilderness, we build roads, allowing hunters access to creatures that inhabit the forest. And as these are shipped off to satiate the desire for exotic meats in certain cultures, the diseases they carry are exported thousands of miles away, into cramped, unsanitary conditions like these Chinese wet markets, allowing them to pass between animals and ultimately into man, leading to the next pandemic, which there will certainly be more after this one. I find viruses and their ecology quite interesting. As we have systematically driven large predators around the planet to extinction, they really are our only predators, and unlike slow-breeding felines, they easily adapt to whatever we throw at them and are so numerous we literally know nothing about their diversity. They really are something we need to find a way to live in harmony with, and I think preventing transmission in the first place and leaving some parts of the world alone are ultimately the best solution. This video is part of an ongoing Fundamentals of Conservation Biology series with a new episode coming out each and every month. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and ring the bell so you can be notified when the next video in this series comes out. Thank you for watching, I really appreciate it. Bye.